Okay, the next item of business is a statement uh, by Jamie Hepburn on the independent review of the skills de uh, delivery landscape. The Minister will take questions uh, on the issues raised by his statement uh, thereafter, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. Uh, and I call on the Minister for around 10 minutes, Mr Hepburn. Uh, Presiding officer, there are a few areas in government that are as important as equipping people with the knowledge and skills they need to thrive in life and the world of work. It's key to our vision for delivering a strong, resilient economy and society as people and their well-being at its heart. Today, I am announcing our intention to initiate an independent review of the skills delivery landscape. Scotland performs well in post-school education. The most recent available data show that, compared to EU countries, Scotland has the highest share of population aged 25 to 64 years with at least tertiary education. The Scottish Employer Perspective Survey shows that the majority of employers are satisfied with the skills levels of those moving to work from education. In 2021, of the employers surveyed, 68% found school leavers recruited to be well or very well prepared. The figure rose to 78% for college leavers and 80% for those transitioning from university. This speaks to the fact that the foundations of our system are strong. It speaks to the work of our universities, colleges, training providers and community and learning development sectors. It speaks to the dedication of those who are in training and post-school education and the educators and trainers who support them. And it speaks to the commitment and partnership working of our skills agencies, Skills Development Scotland and the Scottish Funding Council. But, President Officer, all of us know that the challenges ahead of us are significant. Demographic change, digital transformation and automation, shifts in sectors of our economy, and the need to work towards net zero speak to the need of a skills system that must meet the demands of an ever-changing world. We need a system that is simple, people-focused and built on effective collaboration across sectors and regions, between the public sector and business and across our public bodies. Members will be aware of the work underway to improve Scotland's school education landscape and following the Scottish Funding Council's review of coherence and sustainability, the development of the purpose and principles for post-school education research and skills development. Before I move on to the details, I want to explain why it is necessary that we complete this picture with a review of the skills delivery landscape. The National Strategy for Economic Transformation gives us a real opportunity to put in place an economic system that works for people and places across Scotland. Priority projects will adapt the education and skills system to make it more agile and responsive to our economic needs. They will support and incentivise people and their employers to invest in skills and training throughout their working lives. They will expand Scotland's available talent pool to give employers the skills pipeline they need. Our system needs to respond to the increasing numbers of people we expect will require upskilling and reskilling. As I have laid out, it needs to adapt to shifts in our economy and workplaces as a result of digital transformation, the demographic change of an ageing population and an ageing workforce, and the imperative to respond to the climate emergency and work towards net zero. And so, too, must we support employers who have welcomed EU workers now struggling post-Brexit to fill vacancies. This is disproportionately impacting on sectors such as health and social care, tourism and hospitality, agriculture and food and drink. The report by the Auditor General in January this year on planning for skills focused on progress and better aligning skills and education provision to the needs of the economy now and in the future. Now, this report laid out how government and our partners could do better in collaboration. We have heard, we have reflected and we have acted. We have published the Shared Outcomes Framework which sets out the detail of the collaborative projects being undertaken by SDS and SFC Along with my regular engagements with both agencies, bilaterally and collectively, I have established a Shared Outcomes Assurance Group to oversee progress on implementing them. This has helped identify areas where we believe further clarification about roles and responsibilities is desirable to ensure that duplication and unnecessary complexity in the landscape are removed, to ensure that we are creating the right conditions for collaboration, and to ensure that we are creating a system that is more straightforward for people and employers to access. I am acutely aware that government must provide the leadership to ensure that our skills delivery public body landscape remains effective and efficient. That is a role I embrace and I am committed to driving forward with. But I am also aware too of the importance of making decisions based on evidence. That is why I am asking for independent advice on how the landscape could be adapted to deliver maximum benefit for Scotland's employers, places and communities, but above all for Scotland's people. I want to be clear from the outset, those who work in our agencies can be assured this is, not, this is a review about what we need in the future. It is not a review of performance to date, 
and nor is it about seeking to remove or replace SDS or the SFC. The President Officer, the SDS was established in 2008 and over the last 14 years has delivered key government priorities in relation to Scotland's apprenticeship programmes, national training and employability initiatives, sector and regional skills planning and the National Career Service. I greatly value the work they do. In my recent visit to Inverness showed the strength of the partnership work they undertake at a local and national level, taking a specific problem of skill shortages in the hospitality sector. SDS has worked with industry, the local developing the young workforce group and local schools to put in place training support for young people to move into jobs. That's exactly the type of activity we need to see more of. So I'm grateful to all staff uh, for their work and commitment and to the leadership of the board and senior management teams at both SDS and the SFC for the work they do day in, day out to support the many successes of our skill system. They have my sincere thanks. But we know we face significant challenges in the economic, social and institutional context which have emphasised the need for our approach to skills planning and workforce development to be more clearly embedded in and aligned to our wider education system. We recognise the need to ensure our post-school skills and education provision is part of a single holistic ecosystem which can respond effectively to the needs of industry and learners while also delivering wider societal benefits. The purpose and principles for post-school education and skills will help to drive this vision. This equally applies to the, the need to support the transitions learners make through the senior phase. Ongoing work in educational reform and the careers review will help deliver this alignment. To achieve this end, we must have the right structures, governance, responsibilities and balance of capacity across our public bodies. It was this, uh, with this ambition to join up resource to best effect that I am initiating this independent review. Its purpose is to make recommendations on how the skills delivery public body landscape could be adapted to drive forward our ambitions in the national strategy for economic transformation and our response to the SFC review. This is a review that will not have an exclusive focus on skills development Scotland alone, but will give particular consideration on its interface with and role within the wider skills system. The review's terms of reference are being published today and will be freely available for all members of this parliament and anyone else interested to see. The review starts with no preconceived notions nor predetermined outcomes. It will be independently led to ensure that this exercise is robust and informed by evidence that it gathers. Presiding officer, I am pleased to set out to Parliament today that I have appointed James Withers to lead this review. James Withers will be known to many of us, being as he was until recently the Chief Executive of Scotland Food and Drink. He is a wealth of experience in industry that will bring objectivity, creativity and rigour to the review. James's remit will be to engage widely with stakeholders across the skills and education landscape, including, of course, the staff of our agencies, to inform his recommendations and to report to ministers by spring 2023. He is not being asked to revisit work already done. This review will take account of and not seek to duplicate wider reform recommendations and review work that is already underway, including the outcomes of the new report or those arising in the Hayward Review, nor will it look to revisit the steps we have previously set out for taking forward the recommendations of the SFC Review of Coherence and Sustainability and the Careers Review that Graeme Smith has been leading on. Uh, James will focus on areas such as the design and delivery of apprenticeship programmes, regional and sectoral skills planning and employer engagement and how SDS and the SFC interface with one another to ensure we achieve a more aligned skills system. He will look across the public body and related advisory landscape to deliver recommendations which will ensure that the wider skills delivery public body and advisory landscape are equipped to respond to the needs of our society and economy. Officer, we start from strong foundations, but looking ahead, there is more to do. And we continue to aspire to deliver world-class support and interventions across the wider skills landscape. The Skills Delivery Review will be an important step in ensuring that we have in place a public body landscape that supports an agile, people-centred system, helping individuals to improve their skills to reach their potential ensuring employers can access the skills they need to flourish. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Hepburn. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes, uh, after which we'll need to uh, move on to the next item of business. For members that have not already done so, uh, those wishing to ask a question, to press the request to speak buttons uh, as soon as possible. And I call firstly Pam Gosal. 
thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Minister for advance sight of his statement. It is vital that we ensure Scotland's young people are equipped with the skills our changing economy will need in the coming years. But in June, the Enterprise and Strategic Skills Board called existing stru skills structures too complicated. 10% of Scotland's working age population have low or no qualifications. 23% are economically inactive and businesses are increasingly short of skills. On top of this, there has been a £53 million cut to the employability spending. Given all of this, I have hoped that today's statement would outline bold reforms to the Scottish Government's approach to skills delivery. Instead, we are looking at a mere rearranging of the deck chairs this review will need to bring about real structural changes in order to see genuine improvements. Can I ask the Minister, with the independent adviser not reporting to the Ministers before the next spring, what is the Scottish Government putting in place now to address the array of skills shortages that employers are already struggling with? Will he ensure that this review finally tidies up the confusing array of different bodies that currently make up Scotland's skills sector. Minister. Well, uh, let me first of all thank uh, Pam Gosal for uh, her uh, questions. Uh, I uh, agree with much of what she had to say. She, of course, referred to the uh, uh, comments of the Enterprise and Skills Strategic Board, and uh, part of the rationale of uh, this uh, review is to take head on and consider some of the complications that people do uh, report around the system we have in place just now. That is the purpose of the review, to come forward with uh, recommendations. I am surprised to hear, though, that she has uh, suggested it is in some way a timid approach and it is about rearranging the deck chairs, because as far as I am aware, and given I have appointed them, I am not yet aware of having received the recommendations from James Weathers. So I am not going to second guess what he recommends uh, to us before I comment on them. In terms of the, some of the points she makes around uh, attainment, uh, they are, of course, uh, issues for concern. We want to make sure that we are doing more to support those who have not achieved the, uh, achieved the level of qualification that they require to get ahead in life. But let us also reflect on the successes of our system. Let us reflect on the fact that in 2021, 95.5% of school leavers were in education, employment or training three months after the end of the school year. That is a record high since consistent records began in 2009-10. That is reflecting the fact that the uh, level of uh, uh, tertiary education qualification uh, here in Scotland is uh, amongst the highest and in, indeed the highest of any uh, European country, ahead of the rate of uh, the UK overall. That is reflecting the fact that we have the fourth lowest youth unemployment rate in Europe, ahead of the United Kingdom uh, position. So let's not talk down where we are, but let's recognise there is more to be done. That's the purpose of this review. I look forward to seeing what it recommends, and then we'll consider how to move uh, forward from there. Thank you. Daniel Johnson. Officer, and I thank the Minister for advance sight of uh, his statement. At a time when we are experiencing both labour shortages and we real wage suppression, I think measures that look at how we maximise the talents and capacities of our people, but most importantly, maximise their wages, is critically important. There are long-standing and enduring criticisms of the regime in Scotland around flexibility and the responsiveness of the, the skills regime. Indeed, in January, Audit Scotland uh, stated that there needed to be urgent action. So my one criticism above all else is, is to whether or not this really represents the urgent action that Audit Scotland was calling for. So I have uh, three key questions. First of all, I'd just like some clarity on the scope of this review. Well, the Minister uh, applauds the performance of SDS and SFC. There's certainly the implication uh, that the, the, their scope and footprint uh, will be looked at. Is this a precursor to merger of uh, institutions within the education and skills sector? Secondly, I, I welcome the appointment of James Withers. He has a, a depth of experience in uh, food, drink and agriculture. But I would ask how uh, uh, those with experience of the skills and education sectors and also other industrial sectors will be drawn into this review. 
And, and finally, how will flexibility be uh, looked at in this review? Uh, many businesses report that they find it difficult to access skills, that, that very often it's a one-size-fits-all, uh, and that even adopting and an, an, an implementing new uh, apprenticeship frameworks can take up to three years. So how will flexibility be uh, reviewed and looked at in uh, the scope of this work? Minister. Thank you. Well, those uh, areas are within the scope of work. And again, as I've just said to Ms Gosnell, I'm not going to, to second guess what James Withers will uh, come forward and recommend, but he is able within the parameters of the terms of reference that we have established to look at these uh, areas to set out recommendations uh, to ministers to consider how we can make uh, improvements to the system. And I, similarly, I've heard and know that there are concerns about uh, flexibility, the adaptability of our system. And again, that's part of the reason for the rationale for having uh, this review. Uh, candidly, yes, the Audit Scotland report is part of the catalyst also for uh, taking forward uh, this uh, review. I don't want him uh, to be under the uh, illusion that this is the first piece of work we've taken in respect of the review. I referred already to the Shared Outcomes Assurance Group that we set up, working to a Shared Outcomes Framework, which is designed to make sure that Skills in Scotland and the Scottish Funding Council are working much more collaboratively. A lot of work is underway, a lot of good work is underway, and we'll be happy to, to share more information about that. In terms of drawing on others with industry, experience of industry and so on, that will be absolutely incumbent on James Withers to do that. But I'm not going to give this an independent review, and I think members would really expect it to be an independent review. It will be for him to determine how to do that. Of course, I have expectations that he reaches out to all those with an interest on uh, these matters. And perhaps uh, the most fundamental question he asked is, is this a precursor to the merger? I can have a very straightforward and simple answer, no. Paul McLean to be followed by Sue Webber. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. Um, during the summer, I travelled and visited many businesses in East Lothian. And this thing that came up all the time was labour shortages. Um, the ONS recently forecast that 1.3 million people had left the UK workforce due to Brexit. Scotland's percentage share would be between around about 105 and 125,000. In context, that's around about 2,500 people have left in East Lothian. Can I ask the Minister what analysis or what, how much this issue will be carried out in regards to labour shortages on the skills delivery outlook in Scotland? Minister. Yeah, that will form part of the, the consideration. Indeed, that uh, already informs our considerations around the skills system. We already uh, look very closely at what the labour market information is telling us, what the trends uh, within it are uh, uh, indicating, as well, of course, understanding the wider social demographic uh, changes that are, are taking place as well. So uh, things like the Scottish Employer Skills Survey, the sector and regional skills assessments uh, from SDS are uh, important in uh, that regard. So that can help inform uh, the review that uh, James Withers uh, will uh, take uh, forward. Uh, we uh, are also, and again, making the point uh, that you know, we have not rested on our laurels. There is other work underway. Uh, there is uh, already a group being established, which I will be chairing with uh, various ministers with skills uh, in their remit to ensure that we take a cross-government approach to these matters and uh, one of the things that we will do as a group is carefully consider any findings from the review. Sue Webber to be followed by Jackie. Thank you. A recent Audit Scotland report highlighted the Scottish Government's inability to settle differences between the Scottish Funding Council and Skills Development Scotland and at committee yesterday it was even suggested that the two organisations might be merged. Yet the Minister has stated that this is not about seeking to remove or replace SDS or SFC, and the independent review appears to focus very much on the interface between the organisations. So not wanting to prejudge the outcome of this review, can I ask the Minister, does he agree that the skills landscape is currently confusing, with a different array of agencies that fail to properly integrate with each other, and will he ensure that the review changes this? And indeed, if James Withers recommends wholesale change, it will indeed be implemented. Minister. Well, I, I, you will hear me repeatedly say I'm not going to preempt what the recommendations might be. We'll need to see what the recommendations are, uh, reflect on them, uh, and then move forward uh, from uh, there. In terms of the points that Ms. Weber makes uh, around the, uh, the failure of the system to integrate, I wouldn't say there's a failure uh, to integrate. I would say it could do it better. And that is something we have uh, recognised. We have recognised that uh, across a range of uh, initiatives that we have taken forward. And again, uh, part of the purpose of this review is to consider precisely that question. How can we continue 
to improve the alignment of provision between uh, different agencies, between different employers, because uh, fundamentally I think we'll get more for our, our economy, our society and above all uh, for our people that we can achieve that aim. Jackie Dunbar to be followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. As the Minister will be aware, one of the Auditor General's key recommendations of the Skills Planning Report was providing clarity on the governance and oversight arrangements of skills alignment activity. How will this review achieve this? Minister. Well, that goes to the very heart of, of what the review is uh, uh, going to uh, look at. That's at the core of uh, what it is uh, trying to do. As I've said, we've already taken steps to address uh, governance uh, issues, oversight uh, issues at ministerial and official level have referred to the shared outcomes framework that we've established for both agencies uh, to work towards and the shared outcomes assurance group that is making sure that that work uh, continues in a positive direction. I, I can say that that is uh, happening, but of course the review can look how uh, we can build on that, we can further support uh, this work. My ambition for uh, the review is that uh, the recommendations it makes will help to further clarify the delivery landscape, and I look forward to receiving those from James Withers in due course. Colin Smith to be followed by Stephanie Callan. Thank you, President. Also, when the Scottish Government's Enterprise and Skills Review reported it recommended the creation of a new vehicle to meet the enterprise and skills needs of the south of Scotland, while well, the enterprise body was delivered, the skills element was largely dropped and remained with Skills Development Scotland. So, will this review properly recognise the regional variations that often exist when it comes to our gaping skills gap, and whether the roles of our agencies should actually be strengthened to deliver those skills programmes in local areas that actually meet the needs of the local businesses and workforce in those areas? Minister. Well, on uh, Mr Smith's latter point, again, that will be for uh, James Withers to consider as part of any recommendations he wants to make, uh, working to the terms of reference that we have published. What he will also be able to do is draw on the strength of information that exists already, and one of the great areas of work that Skills Development Scotland undertakes is the regional skills uh, planning that uh, it looks at. And of course, uh, very much in line with the agenda of alignment, one of the uh, Pathfinder projects that is being undertaken by the Scottish Funding Council looking across the range of academic institutions is actually in the south of uh, Scotland uh, area, with the South of Scotland Enterprise Agency uh, being uh, fully involved as part of that process as well. So the direction of travel is one I very much agree with. It tallies very neatly with our alignment agenda. In terms of any recommendations that James Withers wants to make, then uh, that will be for him as part of the review. And uh, as I say, I look forward to seeing what he has to say. Stephanie Callaghan to be followed by Willie Wright. Thank you. Uh, can the Minister outline how the independent review will assess the progress of green skills development across schools in higher education as we're moving towards transforming our economy and society? Um, and we've got those set out in the Climate Emergency Skills Action Plan. So we need to ensure we achieve the mix of skills and job specifications that we need to thrive in a net zero economy. Minister. Well, in terms of the issue of around assessing progress, I think it should be clear. Yes, of course, there needs to be an assessment of how we best go around fulfilling the mission of uh, uh, ensuring that people are provided with the skill set they need to contribute toward, towards moving towards a net zero. And the Climate Emergency Skills Action Plan is very much part of that. But in terms of assessing progress, I think it should be clear, and I think it is important to be clear, this review is not about uh, measuring performance or progress to date. It is looking ahead about ensuring that we have the right structures, governments, responsibilities and balance of resources across uh, the, uh, the system to deliver our ambitions. And of course, one of the key ambitions we have is net zero, and we have to take people with us in that regard and ensure they have the skills for that task. Willie Rennie to be followed by Audrey Nicholl. Uh, I mean, we, we support this review. It is needed, but it should not take an Audit Scotland report, which is heavily critical of the Minister's lack of leadership in this area, to stimulate some action. We are five years on from when it was agreed that the agencies and the government would work together to sort out this agenda. Five years. So we need urgent action. But yesterday, college principals delivered a really stark message. They said there was going to be real terms cuts to college budgets with drastic cuts to staff numbers. So how does the government deliver any skills agenda with that dark future for colleges? Minister. Well, in terms of uh, his... Uh point about this being a uh, it shouldn't have taken a report from Audit Scotland to prompt us into action. Well, 
First of all, that is not the only thing that has prompted us to consider undertaking this route, which I'm very glad he welcomes. But I have to say, uh, it's, uh, if we hadn't done this, I would rather imagine Mr Rennie was saying you're not responding to the report of Audit Scotland. And in terms of the uh, recommendation that we made five years ago with the best one in the world, I'm sure Mr Rennie is aware of some of the fundamental challenges that we have all faced, and government has been no different in that regard in having to uh, gear its attention towards responding uh, to other uh, situations such as uh, COVID-19. But the work continues. There is good work underway, and this review is fundamentally about enhancing that, making sure we have uh, before us a system that can be that flexible and responsive system that Mr Johnson spoke of, which I think uh, fundamentally is something we all want to see, and colleges are going to be a key part of that. Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Ross Greer. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, as the Minister knows, the renewable opportunities in the North East will require a workforce with skills and qualifications across a wide spectrum, including STEM, and I welcome the focus that will be given to sectoral and regional skills planning uh, within the forthcoming review. However, historically, girls and women have been underrepresented in, skill, in STEM courses and careers. Uh, therefore, can I ask the Minister to confirm what consideration will be given within the review uh, to address this issue and ensure that both the STEM and energy sectors are diverse and prosperous? Minister. Well, of course, that is an outcome that uh, fundamentally I think we would all uh, agree with as being uh, important. We know that this is an important sector. We know that it requires uh, skilled uh, labour, and in that sense, no sector can be uh, uh, affording to overlook any uh, cohort of the population uh, in that regard. Uh, the issues that uh, Ms Nicholl identifies are uh, important ones. Uh, the, as I have set out in my statement, of course, the context of this review is about adapting to the challenges of the the future uh, labour market. The review it will uh, look at how uh, we can better ensure we have in place a public body landscape that supports an agile, people-centred system, helping individuals to improve their skills to reach their potential. In that regard, it must reach out and make sure those underrepresented in uh, areas of our labour market can be properly supported. I wouldn't want it to be thought, though, there isn't work underway. Uh, Education Scotland uh, already looks at this uh, uh, as uh, an area SDS is working to an equalities action plan for apprenticeships. There is also an issue that the Scottish Apprenticeship Advisory Board is a lecture. So there is uh, work underway, but as we move forward, it will continue to be of the utmost importance. Ross Greer to be followed by Alexander Stewart. Thank you. This is a welcome review, and I particularly welcome the emphasis on meeting the skills needs of the Net Zero agenda. Can I ask how that will be taken forward in the review, though? For example, will environmental NGOs and think tanks who might have substantial amounts to contribute in this area, but who have not necessarily been the usual suspects in skills consultations in the past, be involved and have the ability to contribute? Minister. Uh, well, I'm not going to uh, set out and uh, steer uh, James Withers in terms of uh, how he takes forward uh, the review. But what I can say is there is that explicit reference as to the imperative to respond to the climate emergency, to make sure that we are reaching our ambitions, fulfilling our ambitions in respect of the net zero targets we have. We have to make sure that people have the skill set to achieve that. Uh, they it may well be organisations that uh, James Withers reaches out to. I am sure he will be watching uh, this statement the questions being asked and uh, taking on board what every member is also uh, contributing today. Alexander Stewart to be followed by Co-Cab Stewart. Ask the Minister, will the review look at improving skills support for small and large businesses and will the Scottish Government consider introducing an export monitoring scheme as we have previously proposed? Minister. Uh, well, on the latter, I am, of course, happy to consider any proposition. That will not form a part of uh, this review, uh, I should uh, be clear. In terms of the needs of small employers, uh, they are of the utmost uh, importance. Uh, there has already been reference to some of the complexities that are sometimes reported in the system. Uh, small businesses in particular will often uh, report that. I am alert to that. I am acutely aware of that. So that will be part of the considerations that uh, I'm sure James Withers, I know James Withers, will be giving as he takes forward his review. Because fundamentally, what we need is a skills system that's geared towards supporting our uh, social and economic ambitions, supporting employer need, and above all, supporting the needs of our people. Co-Cab Stewart. 
Thank you. The Minister recognised the great progress that has been achieved by our skills agencies, both SDS and the SFC. What assurances can the Minister provide that the review announced today will not impact on the excellent service delivery of our skills agencies? Well, that's, that's an important question. I'm glad uh, COCAB Stewart has uh, raised it. First of all, um, hopefully I was clear enough, and if not, I'll be clear again. I'm enormously uh, grateful for the leaders and staff who work in both SDS and the SFC, and indeed in our wider uh, skills system. Uh, what um, this review is about is how things could look in the future, how we can make improvements, but fundamentally people out there can be assured that in terms of the work of the agencies, it is business as usual. They will continue uh, the good uh, work that they do. The work of the agencies does not stop. Uh, they will continue what they do day in, day out, and that is delivering for people in Scotland. We're running a little ahead of schedule. There is a lot of interest in this. I am uh, intending to uh, invite each of the members that have pressed their buttons and wish to ask a question to do so, but they will need to do it briefly, and uh, the responses will need to be brief too. First, Paul Sweeney, to be followed by Stephen Kerr. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Minister has stated that this review will not look at the performance of Skills Development Scotland and the Scottish Funding Council. Why has he chosen to exclude these agencies from the scope of the review when the evidence shows that skills development has been a disaster in Scotland for the past decade and in the past Minister, year alone? Minister. So, I, I, maybe I wasn't clear enough. The agencies are not out with the scope of the review. The fundamental point I'm making is it is not a performance review. It's not reviewing the performance of uh, the agencies. There are other mechanisms by which we can uh, review how they have performed and we can hold them to account for that purpose. Fundamentally, what this is about is looking ahead to ensure that we consider how we can uh, uh, have better interaction between the agencies and improve our skills system. It is not about looking at what has gone before, it is about looking ahead and what we will need in the future. Stephen Kerr, to be followed by Michael Mara. So The Minister will know that Scotland's employers want transparency in how the apprenticeship levy is spent in Scotland. Mm. Will this review include that element? Will that be part of it? And will the voices of business, small, medium and large, and the college sector in relation to the apprenticeship levy be heard in this review? Minister. Those voices will be an essential part of James Withers' consideration. In terms of the apprenticeship levy, uh, he may well be looking for uh, that clarity. I would just like clarity in terms of how it is raised. Of course, the levy was implemented with any form of consultation, any form of interaction, unilaterally by the UK Government. Frankly, right now, standing before you, I could tell you who pays the apprenticeship levy in Scotland. So, if we want some more transparency, maybe that should start with the UK Government that can let us know who actually pays it, and then we can get them to the... And very briefly, the Michael Mara. Thank you, President Officer. The Audit Scotland's report was very clear. This is about lack of leadership for ministers. Why does it fall to Mr Withers to provide the leadership, and what are we paying the ministers for? Minister. Well, I thank Mr Mara for uh, that very constructive uh, question. I, I would put, turn it on its head if I was to stand up here unilaterally and announce what we might be doing. I think the very first question Mr Mara would be asking me is what was the evidence that we took to make these decisions. James Withers is working for ministers to make a series of recommendations. Ultimately, it will be for ministers to make those decisions and Parliament to hold us account for them. Thank you very much indeed. That concludes this item of business. There will be a brief pause before we move to the next item of business.